Hello to all of you out there in this great big world that I call social media. This is your brother Dana coming to you from the city of Chicago. Special shout out to all of the precious chosen people of the Most High Yah. Um, this Friday will mark the exact day that 26 years ago I stepped for the first time into an inner city church in the Rogers Park community and began a journey that is now 26 years later. A journey that had incredible downs and pain and suffering, challenges and issues, but also a journey that has molded me, shaped me, formed me, and made me who I am today. And so this week, I'd like to put out a video each day sharing a story of my life serving God, the Most High Yah, here in the inner city black communities of Chicago, Rogers Park to now North Lawndale, so that you can get to know me before you began to see me four years ago on YouTube to give you a better understanding of how the Most High Yah has shaped me for such a time as this. And so the story or the book that I'm going to use was one that not only gave me some encouragement, but also I used as I would go and speak in front of white churches across Minnesota and Ohio to Florida. But I'd also use that when I was told so often that I'm wasting my time, that I need to get out of the inner city, that all these hardships that I was facing was signs from God to tell me to go. But I saw it not as a sign from God, but as the attempt of the enemy to give me to quit and to give up. And so I'm going to start today, Monday, with this book as I celebrate this week of remembering the goodness of the Most High Yah and how He was faithful to me over these past 26 years of serving Him because of my love for Him. And so this book <laughs> is called McGilligot's Pool by Dr. Seuss. And I'm going to read not the whole thing, but just enough of the book to give you a basis of why this book <laughs> was a tool that I had used over the years in defending why I remained here amongst my black brothers and sisters in serving the Most High Yah. So it says, young man, laughed the farmer, <laughs> you're sort of a fool. See, you'll never catch fish here in McGilligot's pool. Got to see the pictures. See, this pool is way too small, and you might as well know it. When people have junk, here's the place that they throw it. See, you might catch a boot or you might catch a can. You might catch a bottle, but listen here, young man. If you sat 50 years with your worms in your wishes, you'd grow a long beard long before you'd catch any fishes. Hmm, answered Marco, the young man. It may be you're right. I've been here three hours without one single bite. There might be no fish, but again, well, there might. Because you never can tell what goes on down below. This pool might be bigger than you and I know. No. 
This might be a river, how mightn't it be? Connecting McKelligot's pool with the sea. Then maybe some fish might be swimming towards me. If such a thing could be, there they certainly would be. See, some very smart fella might point out the way to the place where I'm fishing, and that's why I say, if I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch here in McGilligot's pool. I might catch a thin fish, I might catch a stout fish, I might catch a short or a long, long drawn out fish. Any kind, any shape, any color or size, I might catch some fish that would then open your eyes. Oh, the sea is so full of a number of fish. If a fella is patient, he might get his wish. And that's why I think that I'm not such a fool when I sit here and fish in the inner city pool. I like this story because it really reminded me of the inner city community that I lived, that people saw it as a place where junk is thrown, where trash is, where unvalued lives of people live. But through the years, I now know that there's something beautiful that lies beyond the surface of what our eyes saw. Back in those years, I didn't know it was the precious chosen people of the Most High God. But I saw the doctors and the lawyers. I saw the inventors. I saw the teachers. I saw the beauty that the rest of the world and the people in the white church did not see. And I believe that if I was patient enough and I served, that God would use me. And so I got a job at this inner city church. It was a white church that refused to change to the changing community. And so the majority of the people, including the pastor, lived out in the white suburbs. And the church began to die from five, six hundred people down to maybe 20. They hired a youth pastor to start a youth program thinking that if youth would come to the church parents would follow and they could restore this church back to what it was before the neighborhood became black and mixed i walked in the door that night never knowing what to expect four or five young black men walked in we shot a couple hoops because in this old fellowship hall I put a couple basketball rims in and invited young people to come and play basketball. At one point, after several months, I probably had maybe 30 young men that were coming to play ball. But I was kind of intimidated and, and didn't know what to do or to say, so I kind of sat there and let them play basketball for a couple of hours. And then one day, God said, enough is enough. I need you to share some scripture, some Bible with them. And when I had called them to come for Bible study, every single person ran out of the church. And so for the next three to four months, I would come to the church, open up the doors, waiting for the young people to come, and nobody showed up. But every time I was ready to give up and to give in, God would send somebody or something that encouraged me to stay. Well, after serving there for about nine years, I would see on an average week of anywhere between two to four hundred young people from the neighborhood in the community. 
And this was one of the first groups of young people. You know, we didn't have a budget, I didn't have money, and so we would save up, and this was a basketball team that we put together of some of the faithful young men that would come. I remember going to uh, Sam's Club where we got these uniforms very cheap. And when the kids put them on, you can see they took pride in that. And so this young man right here, Brian, he is now married and works as a teacher for Chicago Public Schools and does rap music, which brings through the gospel and the good news and, and, and positive inspiration. This young man is doing very well as well. Unfortunately, throughout the years, I buried his older brother that was gunned down that I'll share sometime this week. And then last year, I buried his mother who died of cancer and his whole family have become my family. So that book was very powerful to me because I believed that if I remained and remained patient, that God would send young people my way and give me a chance to speak life into them to tell them that I believe that God had a purpose, a plan, and a reason for their lives and a future for them that would be filled with hope. Many of them grabbed on to that hope. And today I can humbly say that I have a couple hundred young men that I call my sons that are living from coast to coast now. A couple of them are youth pastors. Several of them are in education. Some of them are a CEO of nonprofit companies. Many of them are married and raising their children, escaping the oppression of a society that told them that they live in a neighborhood, in a community that is filled with junk and that nothing good would come out of it. And so I know you, most of you only know me from the past four years, but I hope that this week, as I share some different stories that have happened in my life, that you'll get to know me a little bit better and a little more deeper in understanding how I have become who I am today. Because I believe that if a fella is patient enough, that the Most High Yah will take our work and will produce a harvest. A harvest that will give Him the glory, the honor, and the praise and lives that will be transformed to live the life that the Most High Yah had originally created them to live. So I don't think that I'm such a fool for living and ministering amongst my beautiful, precious, chosen people of the Most High Yah. Shalom.